Good evening, and welcome to Luscombe's Choice on Resonance 104.4 FM. I'm Will Luscombe, and this evening I will be delivering a brief synopsis of and playing selections from Ornette Coleman's The Shape of Jazz to Come, which has been remastered and beautifully repackaged as part of the Atlantic Masters reissue series. The Shape of Jazz to Come was one of the first avant-garde jazz albums recorded. It was recorded in 1959 by Coleman's Piano Less Quartet and was his debut album for Atlantic Records. Each selection contains a brief melody, then several minutes of improvisation, followed by a repetition of the main theme. And whilst this resembles the conventional head solo head structure of bebop, it abandons the use of chord structures. The shape of jazz to come marked a notable change in the direction of jazz music and helped establish the avant-garde or free jazz movement. Later, avant-garde jazz sounded very different to this, but Coleman's third studio album helped define the format for nearly all later free jazz. The pieces follow almost no predetermined harmonic structure, and this allows Coleman and his partner Don Cherry, here playing the cornet, the freedom to take their melodies of their solo lines almost wherever the impulse takes them. They are also backed by a superb rhythm section, bassist Charlie Haddon and drummer Billy Higgins, whose flexible and receptive playing provides a solid accompaniment to the soloist's whims. The shape of jazz to come, whilst certainly revolutionary and groundbreaking, is not difficult to listen to. Later records, such as 1960s Free Jazz, would certainly fit that bill, but this is an eminently accessible post-bop jazz album. Even those who dislike Coleman's later work and the whole concept of free jazz will probably enjoy this. The most important concept which underlies this album is the idea of implied chords. Rather than placing a conventional chord under each note, Coleman chooses instead to only imply the existence of the chord, and in doing so it leaves open many different possible melodies to improvise with. Whilst this could seemingly invite chaos, the band plays coherently and with remarkable fluidity throughout. Each track is full of palatable melodies, which is not something you could say for a lot of Coleman's other albums. At the end of the 50s, Ornette Coleman became the new herald of the future of jazz, surpassing for a time even John Coltrane. Intent on feeling, and with often scant regard for technique, he plunged headlong into a musical form that defied categorization and dismayed orthodox musicologists. Especially aware of the blues, Coleman eschewed a rigid structure in the music and favoured instead explorations of its poetic content. I think what I mean is that Coleman's free explorations were anchored in the spirit of the blues, and whilst his style was perhaps at first deemed difficult and unrecognisable, the essence of his music was something melancholy and joyful. Lester Bangs said of Coleman in an article reviewing Captain Beefheart's Lick My Decals Off Baby, Instead of destroying, Captain Beefheart is taking forms with no seeming mileage left, and reworking them into prophecies of tomorrow, which will be as far-reaching for rock and the new free post-idiomatic music as Ornette Coleman's radical divergence was for free jazz a decade ago. He continues, The comparison with Coleman is apt, on more level than one. Both ushered in new decades with conceptions of ensemble improvisation so unheard of as to raise wide controversy. And both have concerned their music with the rising spirit of man, the unforced compassion and hindsight that led Coleman to write songs like Lonely Woman and Beauty is a Rare Thing. I think what Bangs is saying is that not only is Coleman's music important because it pushes and redefines musical boundaries, It is important because its central conception is a desire to express emotions that are common to all. This is perhaps why music which strives to achieve this can be easily and universally appreciated. The Shape of Jazz to Come is an ideal place to start for anyone interested in Coleman, and a recording to rank alongside Miles Davis's Kind of Blue and John Coltrane's A Love Supreme. Coleman's departure from the chord-based blues and jazz tradition gave him a reputation for difficulty, 
But the startling thing about the shape of Jazz to Come is how melodic and rhythmic it is. So here is Ornette Coleman with Don Cherry on cornet, Billy Higgins on drums, and Charlie Hayden on bass performing Lonely Woman. <laughs> 